piano again. This time it's the technique that's the opposite of open coils. It's strong, firm and much more useful than it is decorative. It's tight coils and it's the one we use for jewellery and for modelling whether that's as simple as a finger puppet or more complex. It's the one we use for boxes and pottery and even perhaps for spinning tops. Okay, tight coils, my favourites. And we can divide tight coils into two kinds. Um, ring coils and solid coils. And your simplest ring coil is going to be something like that. Uh, and how did I make it? I found a dowel of some sort that was the size that I wanted. That could be my finger, actually, or anything else you might find around the house. Loads of things around the house are useful. Um, I took my paper strip, and in this case, I'm after two torn ends. So both ends need to be torn because they're both going to get glue on them. They're not torn, so I'll stay with that. Uh, and then I simply took my dowel, put glue on the tip or near the tip, came round and be careful to line it up perfectly. Now at this point, having got the size I want, um, I personally will slide this uh, ring off the dowel that I made it on simply because I prefer to now roll like this. Um, but you could leave it on the dowel if you find that more useful. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not putting any glue on as I go. I find that if I do that the glue is likely to spoil the nice smoothness of the ring coil. So I will finish the whole ring and then glue down that torn end with too much glue, quite close to the end but not completely and hope that the torn end will be disguised and stay down. Now if I want this uh, ring coil to be stronger because, you know, sometimes people say, well, if you glue along there, it makes it stronger. But I prefer to leave it like it is. Um, and it makes a nice circular coil then. Um, and what I'll do then, if I want it to have some more strength, is I put glue actually on its edge. Or even on both of its edges. Um, so I'll put a fair amount of glue. I, you're probably going, oh, look at all that glue because um, I'm normally going, don't use you, don't use too much glue. Um, but in this case, it needs to be put on and, and rubbed in to give this coil a lot of strength. And I think the best way to do that is with my finger. So I put it on the edge and maybe do the same thing on the other side if I wanted it to be super strong. So there's your um, ring coil, as perfectly round as you can make it. And obviously you can make ring coils in all sorts of uh, different sizes and you can also make them in all sorts of different shapes. Um, but you may not, you know, you, you need a dowel usually to wrap them round. Um, so one thing I do want to draw your attention to is these things, which are kurons. This is a wooden one. And you see how good it is with its different sized rings, which means that I can wrap around them to get different sizes. I believe this is really for lace making, but it's also brilliant for us. Um, and, um, but that might turn out to be quite expensive. Um, so what you could do is make your own one, 
this is one I made that's um, just made out of 10 millimeter wide coils and uh, strips, sorry. And um, I can write also, I can do them to the size that I find most useful. So I know that's 10 millimeters, 18 millimeters, 2 to 5 millimeters, etc. Um, and I've made it myself and I keep it as a, a coiled core on so that I've got all sorts of sizes for making round ring coils. Um, if you want your coil to be another shape, these ring coils can to some extent be shaped. Um, so I could possibly make a teardrop out of it, but can you see what's happening there? And the more you shape, the worse this gets. You see that little bit of um, strip that's coming apart there. I might be able to correct it with more glue on the edge. But the ideal thing really is to make your ring coil on a dowel which is that shape you know, in the first place. Um, and again, you can find things around that could be exactly what you want. But if you can't find um, something, a, a dowel that, that is exactly what you, what you want, you can always make one. Um, so if I wanted to make lots of squares, all this size, I made that out of five or six millimeter wide. It's not very pretty, it's all gluey and everything, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use it as a ring coil, I'm going to use this as a dowel. So I would wrap my strip around it and every time I made a square ring coil I would know that it was exactly that size. Like this, so this is a semicircular thing that might be quite a hard shape to find uh, anywhere else, but if I made it myself, um, like this, uh, and then I, every time I make a, a coil around it I will know that, that, that that's that size, I would use it um, as a dowel. Um, uh, you can make them quite chunky and hefty if you like, again not very pretty, but glued on either edge, they're very strong um, and make really really good dowels. Um, another thing that I want to point out is that occasionally if I want uh, a ring coil of a certain size I don't find a dowel at all. Um, I will just take my um, strip um, this wouldn't work with them all needing to be exactly the same because um, I think you do need to wrap around something then. But if I know that, that I want this to have, suppose my pattern or whatever says, you know, you need to make a ring coil with a diameter of about um, four centimeters, then I'll hold my strip above uh, a ruler like this until it is about the right sort of size and then I'll glue it down. Um, and then continue like that. Again, this is my preferred action. I think got it good down. That's my preferred action. I don't like to stay on a dowel anyway. I would just use it for a size thing. But if you like to stay on the, on the dowel, that, that's, uh, that's fine. Okay, so you can make your ring coils like that. And ring coils can be a variety of shapes and sizes and the more strips you use the thicker it gets um, different shapes if, as we've talked about um, and really some quite unusual shapes um, but I did make these shapes uh, in a different way right so when I wanted to make this um, letter K uh, I needed a K-shaped ring coil to go around the outside of it, like this, so that I could then fill it with the, the lovely filigree open coils. Um, ring coils and open coils often go really well together because one of them is strong and firm and the other one's light and delicate. So they, uh, they work well. So how would I do that? Well, in this case that was very white paper because I fancied doing one that would stand up on its uh, own, a letter that would stand up by itself. Um, but the idea is here. You can see I have a, a quilling board and pins. Um, I've glued quite a few strips together all at once because I want a certain amount of thickness to my um, to my ring coil. I'm going to do a letter A. Um, 
you could just do one strip at a time and keep on going round and round it but every time you go round you must lift out your, your pin and put it back in again and I think that's a bit of a drag so um, I would do it uh, quite a lot of strips together um, I have uh, my letter A drawn on a piece of paper and slid underneath the plastic on my board um, every time I come to a corner I'm going to put a pin in um, and as I come around that corner I'll give it a bit of a squeeze to make a nice crisp corner um, and down to here another pin I always lean my pins ever so slightly outward so that uh, I can pull quite hard on them and they don't uh, come away again give it a bit of a squeeze here and another pin there and leaning out just a little um, and up here now then I've chosen A particularly because now you can see having done that one when I come to this is an inside corner so I would now put a pin on the inside of that corner so I can now come around here give it a squeeze um, bit of a, on this side inside corner again and round here and now I'm coming to an outside corner so um, I can come to here and I'm back where I started from I might risk going all the way around again um, but if I thought that that was um, thick enough then um, I, I would stop here uh, it, it's possible when I say risk I'm not actually sure if that would go all the way around so that's a bit tricky um, but I'll then uh, glue everything down um, and I like to do this um, staggered so that um, I can't really see, you know you can't really see where the join is so I would normally stagger these strips as I as I go uh, like so uh, have I got them all no it's just a few to go there uh, like that and glue down not too much glue um, fit this in there just stick that glue um, I'll come around the corner I think that'll probably be the best thing my last one of course is the longest one there we are I've got two now then the reason I wanted to finish this and, and show you was because what I would now do before anything else is to put glue on here. Um, I like to use a cocktail stick for it um, um, and I won't do it all because it's a bit gummy. Um, uh, it won't take too long but um, I would put glue all the way along here and rub it in with a cocktail stick uh, trying not to get too much on the pins as I go um, so that its whole edge would be covered in glue um, as you saw me doing with my finger with the circular one, glue all over it so that when I finally, when it's dry and I finally take the pins out it will stay as a good strong A-shaped coil obviously I'm going to need a little triangle to go in there to finish my my A but um, that's normally how I make uh, ring coils on a board The other kind of uh, tight coil is a solid coil, um, which is exactly what it says. It's a coil that's completely solid. Um, and that means no hole at the centre. Absolutely no hole at all. You can obviously make these different sizes also, but if it's a true solid coil, it should have no hole at its middle. Um, and how do we achieve that? Well, um, again, we need to use a strip of paper at whatever size the pattern says or what you think you need um, with two torn ends. They're both going to get, no, one of them's going to get glued down. The other end is going to be the centre of the coil and um, we're going to have to work at this quite a lot. Um, this could be the trickiest thing you've ever had to do in quilling. Um, but those of you who are used to rolling with your fingers only um, have got a head start. 
um, because it's the pull back and push thing. So I would scratch this end quite severely. I might well use damp fingers um, so that I can, uh, my fingers will grip nicely. And I'm going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Um, can you see that action? Um, it's this one, as I've shown you before. But this time I'm pressing really, really hard until what I get is I've almost destroyed the centre of my coil and it's almost not a strip anymore. It's completely pressed into nothingness. So um, hold on like crazy. Um, and then what I then do is I hold it up to the light <laughs> to see whether I can actually see a hole at my centre if I'm um, wanting to make one with no hole in the middle. Can you see that? Um, what's really annoying is when there isn't a hole at the middle, but it looks as if there is. That happens as well. Um, you absolutely must not let go um, of your coil. And I'm always then, I always then think the best thing to do is once I've got it started and I and I know there's no hole at the centre, I'll put a little bit of glue there so that if my grip should slacken, um, I haven't lost the crucial bit, which is the centre. Okay, so I'm rolling quite tightly, um, uh, just as I would if I were doing a, a closed loose coil full-length strip don't let go but at least if you should let go you won't lose that center that took you such a lot of making um, get to the end mm, that doesn't look very torn I'm torn or tear off the end um, because I don't want that to show and glue the end down and then you hopefully have um, a solid coil with no hole at its middle, um, as these are also. So it is important to be able to make solid coils with no hole at the centre, particularly for situations like this. I don't want a hole in the middle of my doggy's nose. I don't want holes in his eyes. I want to be able to um, be sure that they look good and realistic with no, with no hole there at all. There are situations when it actually doesn't really matter that you have a hole um, at, at the centre or, or even a um, completely different centre altogether really. This is a, a box that I made uh, some time ago and you can see that its base um, I knew the base was going to take like quite a lot of making, so I did roll lots of strips together and um, started with um, a bend so that it would make an oval shape. All these strips, and that, that could even be, oh, I don't know, maybe even 30 strips there, all rolled together to save me time um, and then a, a final one to keep things down. Having done that, I then decided that the lid might look good with lots of strips as well. I did that too. Um, so if I were doing that, um, I would simply take all these strips um, from a pack or or as many as I wanted from the pack. So let's say, uh, I have a big chunk here, so this amount. And um, before I start to roll them, I would glue another half a length on the end of the one that's going to be on the outside um, and then um, roll and as I say we, we don't really mind for this one that there is a hole at the centre because sometimes it doesn't matter and gosh does it save you a lot of time um, if you do them one strip at a time um, that takes an awful long time and often that's what we need. We just have to be patient, you know, um, and do one strip at a time. But um, in this case, um, look how quickly this coil is growing. Um, and when I finally get to the end here, um, that, that final half a strip that I glued on before I began 
will now come into play and it'll hold everything in place and I'll be able to glue it down and we'll have a good solid coil with a not very pretty middle but if that doesn't actually matter for the thing that you're making then you've saved yourself an awful lot of time. Now it's possible um, that your solid coil will be made from more than one strip and um, that being the case you want it to be as smooth as possible. So um, there are a few tricks to making um, it nice and smooth. First of all you absolutely must use perfect uh, strips. It's no good thinking, oh, you know, it's sl slight seconds. They must be exactly the same width all the way along, which fortunately, if you're from a good supplier, they will be. Um, secondly, you must take each of your strips out of um, the pack the same way. Um, so they must be coiled in the same direction. Um, so um, that's because when the guillotine comes down to cut the strips it turns the strip into a slightly concave or convex shape at the edges which you can't see normally but it does so if you take them from um, different sides and they're different ways up um, you you may not get such a smooth um, solid coil so uh, what I do um, is a tear from my pack and then I go straight down to um, the other end of the pack um, and tear this end also. And then I'm going to glue them together before I roll. Um, now, I used to roll up one strip um, and then um, feed extra strips into the coil as I went. And I did this for a very long time. And I used to quite be amused by people who stuck their strips together before they started. Um, but then somebody pointed out to me that actually this was probably the way to make it smoother. Um, and uh, you know what? She was right. <laughs> so even this, if this ends up being, um, you know, a strip which um, is trailing along the ground, if you've got four or five strips on this coil, um, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, so I still think this is the best way to get the smoothest um, and to make sure that you are taking your strips from the pack the same way up because then once you begin to roll you can do it with confidence knowing that you um, you have got them all glued together um, and uh, they're all going to be smooth. Um, you can, as you roll, let's say this one's just going to be a three uh, strip coil. It can be a little bit hard on the fingers, you know, you've got quite a long way to go when you do more than one strip. And uh, if you find it a little bit hard on the fingers, um, you can add a little glue um, now and again. But um, really, this is like the best way to do it is to keep the glue to an absolute uh, minimum. Um, and I'm doing the rolling thing to start off again and off I go and as I said before I'm putting a little bit of glue here. Remember especially if this is going to be a face it would need to be for a model it would need to be um, as, as smooth as possible. So I won't finish that off because it will take me forever but as I say if you, you find this really hard on the fingers as you're rolling you could put little dots of glue now and then especially if it's um, just going to be a simple um, solid coil. Now from solid coils you can make uh, cup coils and cone coils um, and cup coils are particularly useful for uh, faces for models and things um, and again, it's helpful if there's no hole at that centre. Do you see I was saying before about sometimes there is no hole at the centre, as that side shows, but on this side it looks as if there is. That's very annoying. Anyway, so I'm going to use this side. So to make um, this solid coil into a cup coil, 
Um, I'm using three millimetre or it could be two millimetre wide paper or less, but anyway, quite narrow. Um, and all I do is work it gradually into um, a, a gentle cup shape. Now, uh, if you're doing a face or something similar, don't fall into the trap of doing this too much or your models will look like horses. Um, so um, they just need the gentlest turn um, and therefore you have a, and that will turn it into a cup which you can uh, use for various things. I believe my doggie's nose was a simple uh, cup coil in black. It'll then need glue all over it and in the case of the dog I wanted him to have a shiny nose so I put glue all over the top part of it. If you don't want it to look shiny um, you would put glue all over the inside of your cup. If you want it to be really strong and shiny all over, glue on both sides. Keep the glue fine and smooth and apply it with your finger because you can feel where you've been and where you haven't. So that's a cup coil made of a fairly narrow strip. Um, obviously there are lots of variations on this. Um, you can do different colours and all sorts of uh, variations to that. Now if you want to make um, a cone coil, a cone coil is usually made from a wider strip. This is five or six millimetres. Um, and this would be good for bodies and that sort of thing for if I were making, say, a finger puppet. Um, that would be about, about right for this. And there are various ways of um, turning this into uh, a cone. You, can't, you, you could just push it over a dowel. If you've got the right size dowel, you could press it on a dowel. Um, you can do what I call the, the potter's method, which is a case of turn and push and turn and push, and it gets bigger as you go. But my favourite method is one that I call the Mary Coos method. Mary Coos, um, I think she might have invented this, um, she was one of my students and I've never forgotten her because she um, she showed me this method which uh, I think is my favourite one. You start the, you must start off the, the, the shape and then hold um, between your fingers. You get a lot of glue on yourself, you know, it's a good, good idea to have baby wipes um, around when you're putting glue on, wiping it on with um, your fingers. Um, uh, anyway, so yes, the Mary Coos method. So you hold the, the um, coil like this and uh, and then with these two fingers go in the other direction. So I'm then going to squeeze that way and this way and that way and this way and that way and this way. So I'll do it by keeping my fingers on. And now can you see that? The coil is growing. And it's this. That sort of action and it grows into a lovely, usually nice, regular sort of a, of a cone coil. And again, if I want that to be um, nice and safe, I must coat it with glue or coat it on the inside with glue, um, uh, ready to do whatever it is I want to do with it. Um, I can, um, you can get, make lots of variations, of course. Um, with different colours, uh, different sorts of ones. I think I deliberately rolled four together there to get some nice, a nice ridged effect, um, hole in the end, um, etc. So you can do those. Um, and um, you could, if you use very wide paper, you can make an extremely tall, thin, cone coil. I don't know how tall I could get this. I'm using a, a skewer or a cocktail stick. Well, no, it would be longer than a cocktail stick, wouldn't it? Look, look at that. Isn't that magic? This is why I like tight coils. You can do some amazing things with them. Um, this, um, I've, I twisted this cone coil in two directions. Um, then we have, uh, you can do bent cone coils. You can make bell shapes. Um, this was pushed and then flattened again and then a cocktail stick pushed that little end out. Um, yeah, it, it, it goes on and on. You can uh, shape cone or cup coils a little bit, not a lot, but you can a little bit. 
Um, and I want, one thing I really do want to impress upon you is if you are modelling and you have a body and you have an arm and you have a head and so on um, and you want to um, obviously glue them to each other never ever ever sit holding one solid coil onto the next one, uh, one tight coil onto the other until it's dry there are better things to do in uh, quilling um, than that what you should do is put a, a blob of glue where you would uh, on, on one coil where it's needed and uh, here I've got a little arm and hand which is going to get glued onto my uh, body there um, and so I'll put a blob of glue here because I know that's where the two are going to uh, touch each other but I'm not going to put that on there and then sit and wait for ever and ever I'm going to put them down and I'm going to wait until um, the glue begins to dry. Meanwhile, I can be doing all sorts of other things. And um, when I see it start to dry, then I can put the two things together and it will catch immediately. If it doesn't catch immediately, you didn't wait long enough. So take it off again and wait a little bit longer. Um, but it should catch immediately if it's ready. Another kind of um, solid coil is a bead. Um, you probably saw on my <laughs> model of a quilling lady that she was wearing beads around her neck. Um, but I also often use beads, not just as beads, but also for, for example, um, holly berries. If it's going to be a true bead, it will need a hole at its middle because you're going to thread it, you would thread it onto something. Um, but if it's going to be a holly berry and you don't want a hole, um, or much of a hole at the end, um, then you, you will roll this fairly tightly. Um, so, what am I using? This happens to be, to make a good, that sort of tiny size for a berry, um, this is a quarter length, which is about four and a half inches, 11 centimetres. Um, it's five millimetres wide. And I, can you see I've cut it to a point there? So it's a, like a triangle shape. Um, and then I'm going to roll this up as tightly as I can. Um, you can buy whole books about making beads with paper. Um, and it's a whole different uh, craft all on its own. Um, and it's fascinating, really fascinating. Um, but uh, we quillers tend to use them in the rest of our quilling, so we tend to roll them up in the same sort of way. When I come to the tip, here, obviously, it's the pointy tip, and I'm going to just uh, glue it down, and hopefully I'll create a, a nice round berry, um, like that one. See that? So if I wanted um, authentic-looking berries on my uh, Christmas card, I would make a bead like that. Um, the more, um, the wider the strip, the um, different sort of shape, more oval shape you get, um, you'll be able to work out how to make round, how to make oval, depending on what you, you want. Um, and you, you will have seen at the beginning my necklace, I had all kinds of different um, cup coils, cone coils, beads and everything else on it. So that's um, the beads. Um, now I don't want you to think that um, tight coils can only be for um, practical uses. It's very important to point out that they can be decorative in their own right. Um, and, uh, and so any situation where you know you're going to be handling um, a quilling quite a lot then a solid coil, a tight coil, a ring coil is really what you you should be after because you know if you're holding on to something all the time, open coils, even closed loose coils uh, are in danger of getting crushed. 
um, tight coils are not. In fact, once I've sprayed this with spray varnish or sprayed these um, scarf rings with spray varnish, um, they are then as easily as uh, strong as plastic or wood. Um, made this little book cover and decorated it, and, and you know, the, the design is almost as attractive as closed loose coils and open coils, etc., might be. Um, and you can be very confident they'll they'll stay good. So wonderful, tight coils. There's a postscript to this um, particular video. Do you remember the body and the little arm that I wanted to add? Um, if I'm model making and I put um, blobs of glue, um, it's now long enough. Um, they're beginning to go. Um, dry, you can maybe you can see just at the edges they're going clear. Um, and if I put the one on the other and press, perfect, that's how quickly they'll stick. <laughs>